Welcome back. In the auto watch today, the head of General Motors self-driving car unit called Cruz resigned from his post yesterday. The move came the day after he apologized to Cruz employees for problems that led to investigations into the safety of the vehicles. Just this summer, Cruz was given approval in San Francisco to roll out its robo taxis for 24-7 service and announced a partnership with Honda to bring robo taxis to Japan. But in the months since, Cruz has been involved in a number of crashes, including a prominent one in which a woman was trapped underneath a driverless taxi and then dragged for 20 feet. At the end of October, California revoked the right for driverless cars, and just this month, Cruz called its robo taxis. Joining us tonight to talk about the future of driverless vehicles is Paul Eisenstein, editor in chief of Headlight.News. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Good to be with you. So let's start with this biz, big resignation of the chief executive. Some have referred to this exec, Kyle Vogt, as one of the tech industry's most outspoken champions of driverless technology. So, what does it say about the state of things that he's stepping down so suddenly? Well, Kyle has been a champion of it. You know, he started this organization in his garage. It's the classic Silicon Valley almost success story at the moment. Uh, the problem is that he has been accused by some folks of not really having a good grip on his company and being like many other companies in Silicon Valley that are willing to take risks beyond what you might expect elsewhere. Uh, that's fine when you're talking about a smartphone that may have glitches in the way the phone works. It's another thing entirely when you're talking about a vehicle that can cause serious accidents as we saw just two months ago in San Francisco. And that's really why I think he was booted. They needed somebody, well, let's put it this way, somebody I spoke to who knew what's going on in the company said, we need to have an adult in the office. Oh. Hmm. All right, Paul, and Cruz CEO said they need to double down on safety, and they say autonomous vehicles will improve safety, but how long into that technology is really ready and essentially safe? A lot of people were saying it was ready now. Uh, you may recall that Cruz tried to hail how it handled this crash. What happened originally was a young woman ran across the street in downtown San Francisco, was nicked by a hit and run driver. She was tossed in the air and landed in front of the cruise vehicle. The cruise vehicle had already started moving away from the light and then hit her and immediately stopped. Well, that was the story that Cruz tried to tell us initially. Uh, the problem was the video that they provided that was uh, uh, taken by the cameras on the car wasn't complete. A few weeks later, the full video came out, and after stopping for 20 seconds, the vehicle continued to move, trapping the woman underneath. So as we can see, the software may have some safety factors built into it, but not enough. All of these headlines, some of the issues you just mentioned, and these headlines with, you know, executives stepping down, what does this do to the near future of this industry? Can you regain the amount of trust that's, that's being lost? Well, it's going to be hard, yet we saw a fatal accident involving a, uh, a semi-autonomous vehicle run by Uber a couple of years ago. That occurred out in the Phoenix suburbs, and that had a safety driver in the vehicle who was supposed to take over in case of an emergency. She didn't, in fact, she was prosecuted for that. Uh, but people started feeling good again. So the question is, will they be able to fix the software? Will they be able to demonstrate anytime soon that the problem that resulted in this serious injury has been addressed? And I should point out that while Cruise is in trouble, another company, a spinoff of uh, Alphabet and Google, called Waymo continues to be testing its vehicles on public roads in California and elsewhere. So the autonomous technology, full driverless technology, continues to move forward, but there are a lot of skeptics who wonder whether we're moving too fast. Yeah, Paul, and in terms of moving forward, GM says they'll continue to develop the technology. Volkswagen and Ford, they've ended their program for self-driving cars, saying it wasn't financially viable which companies are leading the charge on this tech? Well, there are some Chinese companies, there's a couple over in Europe. There are some companies that are focused on trucks rather than passenger cars. But when it comes to robocabs, which will probably be the place where most Americans would run into it, so to speak, uh, Waymo 
remains probably the leader right now, given a bit of a jump as a result of the setback that we've experienced at Cruise. Now, before we let you go, Paul, we want to get your take on this announcement recently, a partnership between Hyundai and Amazon, where people can just buy a vehicle online. We have sort of seen the car shopping experience upended in yeah. recent years with companies like Carvana and, and Tesla. So is this, do you think, just a gimmick or just the next evolution of that? Very definitely an evolution. Whether this will work and will become a major source of business for Hyundai, I don't know. Uh, the folks I spoke to, including their U.S. and global CEOs, have indicated that they believe that this will become a very significant uh, factor and will boost sales of Hyundai products. We know that uh, Amazon is talking to a number of other automakers as well. So I think you're going to see a lot of folks sign on, and for good reason. Amazon has something like 100 50 million people who subscribe to the Prime service and about 250 million shopping events, if you will, every month. And that's just North America. When you talk about worldwide, it's even greater. Uh, you are definitely going to see more and more people buying online. Uh, it may be that they go 90% of the way and still go to the dealer just to make sure they like the vehicle, maybe to test, take a test drive. But online buying is becoming a very important and a very important part of the car selling process. Yeah. Probably not two day shipping and free returns. Yeah. I have a feeling, but we will yeah. see. Actually <laughs> actually it could be even quicker. Wow. You buy it online, the dealer may deliver it to your home or office the same day. Wow. All right, we will we'll find out soon. Yeah. Paul Eisenstein, Headlight News. Thanks so much for joining us today, Paul. Thank you.